Good morning and welcome to day 18 of the Mindfulness Challenge. Um, I hope you're doing well. I think what's interesting for me is is that I'm speaking to a lot of people and, and it does seem that we're all on different parts of a similar journey, but we're at different junctions. So some people are now um, starting to really feel the lockdown. I'm probably, you know, in theory, um, in sort of day 20 of a lockdown really here in the UK. Some people now have experience in this. Some people have experienced mild forms of the virus. I still can't get rid of this. It's it's the weirdest thing in the world. I've never had um, nasal congestion or just a feeling of for nearly 20 odd days. And I'm taking vitamins, I'm doing these. My body is fighting the good fight, but I'm here and I'm happy. It's mild and, and we can move forward. Um, my family, thank you, are a lot better. My wife is a lot better. My daughter is a lot better. Um, even so, that she woke up this morning and went outside and watched the sunset with the dog at sunrise with the dog at six six o'clock this morning, twenty past six, which was lovely. It's interesting, though, isn't it? A twenty three year old girl would never have thought of sitting outside with the dog watching the sunrise. Things are changing. Ideologies are changing. Um, values are changing. Um, Empathy is rising, compassion. Keep talking about it. Day 18, I'm still talking about it. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the latest coronavirus update. Our Prime Minister Boris Johnson is in hospital now, having, you know, not showing any signs of um, uh, the virus subsiding for 10 days. I know that feeling, um, but obviously he's slightly more important than me. So uh, so they've taken him into into hospital. But you can get well soon, Boris, if you're watching this. Um, Today I want to talk about the power of choice and it is it is difficult, I'll be honest with you, it's really difficult to keep coming up with content um, 18 days on the spin And but what I keep doing is I keep sitting with Ronnie and then we watch some videos and then I go over my old casework on MBSR, Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction and we see where we are. So today I just thought about the power of choice because you know there's a, there's a famous um, saying or quote uh, from Shakespeare and he says nothing is either good or bad but thinking makes it so so nothing is either good or bad but thinking makes it so and for me you know that is a, quite an interesting thought and it's even interesting thought for a basis of mindfulness all those years ago when Shakespeare was writing his um his, his plays and his memoirs etc but for me, an essential part of spiritual awakening is to learn how we become aware of the difference between the situation and what our mind says about it. So, and that is, you know, even more so in these in these situations where we are at the moment, because there there, there are a lot of um, particularly challenging um, situations, and some of us now, as I said, are on different parts of this journey. So, a lot of us will be confined um, to our houses to small spaces, we can't go out. We may share that space with several people, which comes with its own challenges. Um, we may share this, on, we might just be on our own, which again is different challenges. You know, we may be um, experiencing financial uh, issues or difficulty. We may be fearing the virus. We may feel sick. We may have a cough and a cold. All these things many of us experiencing would normally be called bad situations or or issues or you know and, and and our mental mind would be really trying to um, drive a narrative based around what we're experiencing on a conventional level you know it's not nice feeling the way we do having this fear of being sick or being sick or worrying about finances or doing all these things so what does it mean when nothing is good or bad but thinking makes it so the very spiritual lesson in the ability for awakening is to, as I said, differentiate the situation that you're experiencing and the mental commentary that we wrap around that experience. The thoughts you're having at this time are around the situation that is happening around you. For most people, what we're experiencing um, is mental commentary and what we're experiencing and we put them together. What this does is it absolutely amplifies 
our emotions, our fears, our self-doubt, our, our anxiety, our depression, all of these things. And, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to differentiate the actual situation away from the mental narrative. So if we're feeling um, stuck in on our own, we're not liking it, the experience around that mental talk would be saying, no, this is going to get worse. How can I cope with this? I've been stuck in now for 17. I haven't seen my, my wife, my daughter, whatever the scenario is. This is going to get worse. Like, how am I going to cope with this? And and your mind will really go on this spiral of, <clears throat> this is going to get worse. I, I'm not going to be able to cope with this. And that mental chatter actually makes you become it. Not just the situation. You're now becoming this mental chatter. And you are becoming um, aware of this chatter and it's amplifying the mental commentary through the experience, through reading and watching things on, 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 on the news and on social media. And if we feel unhappy or unwell, and, and, and I have had this now for a couple of weeks, the commentary that I've been put on is like, oh, when's this going to end? What's this? What's that? What's this? And actually, if I can separate that commentary from the actual reality, then things get a little bit easier. So if we feel unhappy and we can't take much more and, and our mind feels like, you know, this is, I can't take another three weeks of this. I really can't. Then we need to, dis we need to separate that mental, I can't take this for three weeks to actually, it's going to be three weeks. I'm going to experience it. I'm going to be in the moment, be in the present. Because the commentary that we're working on now is happening now. And we need to become aware of the self-talk. We need to talk to ourselves. A lot of us will be talking to others as well. And when we talk to others, we use that self-talk as our narrative to others. So that becomes our standpoint. It becomes our value based on our thoughts. How about asking yourself, how would this experience be without any mental thought, without the addition of the interpretation of our mind. You see, when something happens, in most cases, our mind goes into negative. It doesn't come on the pleasant side of things. If we're having a great time or whatever, we just experience it. We enjoy it. We don't, we don't put any narrative to it. It's when things get difficult, it gets going. How would I experience what's happening to me now without any unnecessary narrative or thought. It's an interesting thought. <laughs> but the addition of everything we put on our shoulders, the excess baggage, we're calling it, making ourselves unhappy for many years. We've always done this. We've always created this narrative, this, this mind, mental chatter based on the situation that we're in to amplify our emotions and experiences that we're without. So for me, the key here, and I said the power of choice, there is a choice about separating the situation from the narrative. We interpret the situation and we label it every time. I'm having a good time. I'm having a bad time. I'm having a fun time. I'm not having a fun time. I'm not happy. I am happy. Yeah. So if we ask ourselves the question, what happens if we separate the chatter from the experience? And when we do this, when we separate the experience, we come into the moment. Instead of, you know, living through this veil of a narrative that, you know, everything is falling apart. The world is falling apart. Then we listen to other people's narratives about conspiracies and this and that. And it just creates more mental chatter. When actually, isn't the reality of always interpreting things as bad? That's what we do. So let's separate, let's separate the experience to our thought process. And what I'd like you to do right now is just wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just take a deep breath and just look around the room, you know, just, just take a look around the room. I'm going to look over here and, and there's a, a lighting system that I use. I've got a lighting system here, actually. It's not, I didn't put it on today. Um, but there's a lighting system here and I'm looking at that and then I spin around here and I look at my 
be love and give love. And I breathe. You may look out the window. And just when you realise that you're just looking around, I'm looking at my neck curtains or I'm looking at a glass that I've had with a drink in it. I'm just going to stand and stay at that a moment. I'm just going to be here, breathe and just for a moment be with that glass. You do it. Look around the room. Have a look out the window. Look out the window. There's a beautiful tree out there. Just going to look at the tree and focus on the tree and be with the tree. And what you've realised is, by sitting here and doing that, we've dropped the mental chatter, we've dropped the narrative. And all we're left with is this moment. Front door's just gone. We'll just sit, be with that. Hopefully someone's going to get up and open it. But because we drop the mental chatter and the narrative, we leave all this behind and we're in the moment. How does this feel for you? Or for me, it feels like there's a weight starting to lift off my shoulders, a weight of this excess baggage that we talked about, the weight of the unconscious thinking that's absolutely amplifying our negative chatter of the situation we're experiencing right here, right now. And this creates unhappy emotions and this compounds the mental narrative. There is another way and it's awareness and presence spiritual awakening and the fundamental practice of that is to be able to separate the narrative from the situation let go of the narrative and be present with this moment as it is this moment is all there ever is our entire life is right here now is now it has to be now there's nothing else our entire of whatever happened in the past if we think about it it's happening now and when we remember it we remember it in the now the future, we think about the future, but we're thinking about the future now. The future is now. Our life and our thoughts are separable. And we think for so many times that our lives and our thoughts are inseparable. And there's an amazing power, there's this awakening and enlightenment inside you. And it's so strong, and it's your awareness. It, there's, it's your when you can become aware, and you can be in the present, and we can separate our narrative to the situation. That is a lot deeper than artificial highs and lows through happiness. But on a lot of these situations, when people talk to me about spiritual awakening, it's because they've been challenged. They've had something in their lives that's made them challenge the status quo. They've sat back and thought, God, my dad's just died. And I look at it from here, not here. I look at it from here. And I separate my mind of my thought process of my dad to my dad dying. And I separate the two and I'm just sit with it. It is so powerful, even now thinking about it. It is so powerful, that, that light inside, that awareness. And the awareness of of identifying the separation between the two absolutely frees you from the conditional limiting self that we've known for so many years. But there's so much more to this deeper identity. Yeah. <coughs> it's, it's, it's your awareness. It's not difficult to experience, but we don't sit with it. We as humans, we need to be challenged. And that's why sometimes I keep talking about Minimum loss is maximum impact. This is why this moment is helpful for our awakening. At this moment, there is so much suffering and unhappiness and news and everything else. There's a situation we're experiencing, but we're amplifying that with our narrative. We're wrapping it around it and <clears throat> exploding it. And don't do it. Separate it. So whenever we're feeling unhappy, fearful, self-pity, anxiety, it's just a wake-up call for us to understand how it all rises. Sit with it. Become aware of how your mind starts to create this narrative. And by doing this, we get underneath the consciousness and we can move away from the narrative that really is, the reality is so much deeper. We're in the moment. We wake up to the identity by realising the fundamental difference between what is and what the mind says about it. We can then cultivate experiences with a the power of presence which is for me 
true awakening. Instead of being reactive and complaining about all the experiences we have and talking about this excess baggage, it's mainly about complaining about unfairness in life, the situation in the world. It's always me. Ba 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 ba. That narrative is it, it brings in self pity. It brings in ego. We talked before about the need to 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 complain it, it it creates a fictitious identity we like to find fault and blame because your mind says i told you so yep i can confound it only happens because of the narrative we're wrapping around it the situation and the narrative is what makes you unhappy the situation and the narrative is what creates fear and self-doubt it's the present moment that we face here now and separating the two is how we truly have the choice to be fundamentally happy and be in the moment. If we're not unhappy about the situation anymore and we can separate it, we're no longer at the mercy of our mental chatter. Yeah, don't get me wrong, look, it, it, it's nice when nice things happen and it's not nice when not nice things happen. But we're no longer at the mercy of those conditions Everything can become clear. Everything can become a lot easier on yourself. We can get rid of this emotional baggage if we can differentiate between the experience and the mental chatter around it. Some people say life's not here to make you happy. Life's here to challenge you, for you to awaken. And that's what we're doing right now. Can we let, can we learn to let go of the narrative, the mental unhappiness, so that we can just be. And if we go back to the original point, nothing is neither good or bad, but thinking makes it so. We have a choice. And that choice is to separate the mental thoughts, the narrative, from the actual real experience. And we can just come away and spend a minute with a tree. Spend a minute with looking around the room. We can stop that mental narrative. We have a choice, and it's a very powerful choice. I hope that makes sense for you. I'm going to now do the loving kindness meditation because I think it's very apt that um, we can love ourselves and we can hold ourselves in true kindness. Thanks for watching. I hope it makes sense. And remember, we always have a choice. Thank you. So I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to put a nice image up. And I'm going to sound a bell for us to start. And all I want you to do now is focus on your breath. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in and breathe it out. And just focus on where your breath is. Where do you feel it most? Is it through your nostrils? Is it on your t-shirt? Is it on your jumper? Where do you feel? Do you feel your, your belly moving in and out? Breathing in and breathing out. And to start this, we're going to offer loving kindness to ourselves. And I want you to focus on the intention of these words. And I want you to continually repeat these words. And if you have a thought that comes in, you welcome it, you love it, you let it go, and you come back to the mantra. So as we're breathing in, I want you to say these words. Breathing in, may I be safe. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I be happy. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I be healthy. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I live with ease. Breathing out. Repeat the mantra. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Continue that mantra as you're breathing in and you're breathing out. And if you have any thoughts that come in, you welcome them, you love them, you let them go, and you come back to your mantra. May I be safe. May I be happy, may I be healthy, may I live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. 
May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Welcome this beautiful love into your life. To be kind to yourself. To connect in with yourself. To love yourself. To heal yourself. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Now what I'd like you to do is just, with your eyes closed, choose someone in your life that you love. Or someone that inspires you. Someone you think about, who you're grateful for. And I want you to picture that person in your mind. And on this occasion, as you're breathing in, you say simply, May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. This is loving kindness for somebody else who is someone you love, someone inspires you. Put them in your mind, see them and set the intention of may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. And don't forget, if you have a thought, just let it welcome in. Hold it. Don't put any judgment on it, accept it, acknowledge it, let it go and come back to your mantra for this person that you love. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. And may you live with ease. Now the focus, we're going to focus on someone you know who's having a difficult time at the moment. Maybe someone who's ill. And we're going to offer them kindness. So if there's somebody you know who is in self-isolation or isn't feeling very well at the moment. I want you to place there in your intention in your mind, with them in your mind. And you say again, may you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. And may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. This is somebody who you know who's having a difficult time at the moment, who may be ill. Set the intention of that person, put them in your mind's eye. And as you do, you say to yourself, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And if you find your attention or your mind wanders, don't worry. Just love it, let it go. And return back to your phrases, your mantra. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. These mantras are now your anchor. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. Now what I'd like you to do is choose someone in your life that you might have difficulty with or have some tension with or have had an issue with or something hasn't sat right between the both of you for a little bit of time. This one can be difficult, but we set the attention and we put them in our mind's eye and we say to them in our mantra, breathing in and breathing out, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And again, if something, a thought comes in, I want you to 
allow it in, accept it, acknowledge it, put no judgment, love it and let it go and come back to your anchor, your mantra. For the person who you may have had difficulty with, have had an argument with, there's some tension between you. Set the attention, put them in your mind's eye and say, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy and may you live with ease. And if at any point you find that difficult, then you can just direct it back to yourself. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Now I'd like you at this moment to direct your loving kindness, your attention and your intention to all forms of life, people, animals, all beings, those people who need it most all over the world at this very difficult time. And I want you to say for them, may all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Breathing in, and breathing out and again if you have any thoughts you let them in you let them go and off you go may all beings be safe may all beings be happy may all beings be healthy may all beings live with ease breathing in and breathing out may all beings be happy may all beings be healthy may all beings be live with ease May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Take a deep breath in and as you do, I just want you to slowly just recenter yourself on the chair and get your sense of awareness and feel your twiggle your fingers or, or move your toes and come back into the room and open your eyes. I hope you enjoyed that loving kindness meditation. We've done it a lot of times now, but we we should be cultivated. And and I was talking to um, a lady, Car I mentioned her, Carly. She's probably watching now. And she was talking about her dad who is isn't very well. He's he's you know terminal. He's got terminal issues. And I know Carly talks about it openly, so I can talk about it openly. And she's been to see him recently and he's felt a bit better. Because the person she thinks of when we talk about who's somebody ill or not not in, not in, not happy or in a good way is her dad. And he starts to feel better. Now is that whatever? I know what it is. It's the healing, the power of thought. It's the healing of working with the conscious, one conscious mind. It's a great book, by the way. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the talk. We're going to go on to day 19 tomorrow. Wow. Um, God bless and God willing. So did you wake up this morning and go, good morning, Julian, I love you. Good morning, Julian, I love you. I hope you did. Um, and I hope you're enjoying uh, this session and you are staying with me while we do it. It does feel like I need to do it. Um, I have spirituality and I have spiritualism, my spiritualism and belief system. And I believe from spirit they're, they're, they're getting me up every morning and keeping me well to be able to do this. What did I say well and sniff? That's what we do, not we well. <coughs> you know? But anyway, have a lovely day. And remember you have the power of choice. And just go out the back or out the garden or look out the window and just, just be present at the moment. And learn how to separate the situation from the narrative that we give to it. God bless you. Be love and give love as always. If you <clears throat> if you'd like to leave a comment about today's, that's fine. Please share it on Facebook. Subscribe. But if you also subscribe, you can hit the bell button, which will give you notifications of when these videos go up as well. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day as best we can. And make the choice, the power of choice for you to separate your experience with your mental thoughts that amplify only negativity. Be loving, give love, take care. See you later. Bye-bye.